Today we got a pretty cool material. We're going to be running 2507 Super Duplex. It's one of the hardest steels you can run on a CNC machine. Super Duplex is twice as strong as a normal stainless steel. It's got great corrosion resistance and it conducts heat well. It's also a pain in the butt to machine. It'll work harden like a lot of super alloys will. So if you go too light and you baby the cut too much, it'll actually start breaking your tools. So you need to make sure that you have your speeds and feeds dialed in, which I'll give to you. And you need to make sure you're running good coolant on your part and using good carbide tools. I designed a pipe flange that we'll be making out of this super duplex. I also grabbed a chunk of aluminum so you can see what we're machining without coolant. So let's get into it. The first tool we're going to be running is a CNMG 432 from Kenametal using their KCP40B inserts. I'm going to face the part first with the insert and then we're going to turn across the OD. For this tool, we're going to be running it at 275 SFM with a feed rate of 9 thousandths per revolution. For the OD roughing, I'm going to be taking it with 80 thousandths depth of cuts and leaving 10 thousandths on the OD on all sides. This operation shouldn't give us too much trouble on the OD. But we might have to watch out a little bit because the part has been water jet on the OD. There's a little notch on the outside of the part, so it's a little bit of an interrupted cut. So I'm just going to have to watch that when we're turning it. For the OD cut, I'm going to make sure that I turn a little bit past where the finished surface is. So on my roughing parameters, under my lead in and lead out, I have a 400 thousandths extension going off of that. So it turns past this OD surface. The next tool I've got running is a 2 inch Drill Fix Pro from Kenametal. I have it in a KM50 extension going into the Capto C6 holder inside of my machine. For this tool, we're going to be running it at 350 SFM. Which puts it at an RPM of 668 rotations per minute. For the feed rate, we're going two thousandths and eight tenths per revolution. The only thing with this drill is that we have to make sure we take it all the way through the parts. I know the overall length of the part is two and a half inches. So I have it programmed for 2.7 just to make sure it clears all the way through the part. For the next tool, I'm going to be popping in these six holes on the face of the part. So I'm going to be using a 634 diameter Kentip FS drill to drill the part. I'm going to be running it at 148 SFM, which puts it at 900 RPM. And for the feed rate, we're going to be going 10.4 inches per minute. Once again, I've got to make sure that it goes all the way through the surface that I'm drilling. So I have a tip compensation telling it to go 300 thousandths further than the Z depth that I select. And you can see on my Mastercam file that it's going well past the drilling surface here. After the drilling, we call up a 3 8 Harvey 1 TE ball mill and I'm just going to chamfer the front of these six holes, putting a 20 thousandths chamfer on all of them. I'm running it at 225 SFM with a feed rate of 1 thousandths 2 tenths per tooth, which puts it at 11 inches per minute. Nothing too special about this tool path, it's a 2D contour. I'm just using the 2D chamfer function inside of it with a 20 thousandths chamfer width and depth. And for the setup, we're using the C-axis face on the upper left setup of this machine. I program it once. And then we use the transform toolpath function to duplicate it across the six holes. After that, we're going to finish all of the OD. Using a KCP40B insert, just like we did with the roughing, this one's going to be a CNMG 431 MV. So a very similar insert, just a smaller radius. Just like we did with the first tool, we're going to be facing the part, then finishing the OD. I'm going to be running it at 600 SFM. With a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. Just like the first tool, we're turning a little bit past the finished surface. We're going to be clamping onto that finished surface for the second op, so I wanted to make sure that I turned well past it so that I don't have any leftover material from this operation. Next, we're going to be finishing the inside of the parts. I have a one inch diameter heavy metal boring bar 
on the bottom turret of the machine with the KCM15 insert. I'm going to be finishing it at 955 RPM, which puts it at a 500 SFM spindle speed. For the feed rate, we're going to be going two and a half thousandths per revolution. So when I rode a THW3 chuck from Shunk, I've got some jaws that perfectly hold our OD surface of our first operation part. And now we're going to do our second op. We're going to be using that same CNMG 432 that we used on operation one, using the KCP40B insert. Not only do we have a lot more work to be done than we did on operation one using this tool, the work is going to be a lot more difficult because we have interrupted cuts due to the drilled holes we put in on the first operation. And I can tell you, Duplex does not like interrupted cuts. So it's gonna be fun. I turned down everything. So we're gonna be running it at 225 SFM with a feed rate of 8 thousandths per revolution. And as you can see on my depth of cut, I turned that down also. So we're gonna be running a 45 thousandths depth of cut. We're still leaving 10 on all surfaces. I'm starting off roughing the OD. After all the OD roughing is done, then I'm gonna face the front of the part. And that's only because I just want it to face it when there's a smaller surface left over instead of having to face the bigger OD from the previous operation. After that, we're gonna be calling up the same finisher that we used on operation one. The KCP40B insert. CNMG 431 MV. We did most of the hard work on the operation before, so it shouldn't be too bad. We're gonna be running it at 600 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths, just like we did on op one. I have a 5 8 boring bar in the upper turret. And this is just gonna put a chamfer on the very front of the part. I'm using a KCM 15 insert from Canada Metal, and this is just gonna run at 300 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. Again, it's not doing too much work. Everything else has been done from the two previous operations. I'm just putting a little edge break on the front of the part. And that's all the operations on our duplex flange. So I'm really happy with how the flange came out. Everything's looking good on it. Honestly, the only thing I probably would have changed was I did the holes on the front side because I had the material all chucked up there. And then when I did the second side, I had all these interrupted cuts here. So I should have thought about that when we set that up. The tool didn't like that interrupted cut, but we got through it. And honestly, the drilling ran wonderful on this part. Even that two inch drill, even with all the extensions, it ran perfect. And we shot through all of these small holes, no problem. So. Drilling was wonderful, the finish came out great. Really happy with how the part turned out. We used to do a lot of duplex parts back in the day with all the aerospace and medical work that we did. So it was cool running it again. So thanks for watching our video. Make sure you stay tuned to our channel. We got a lot of big things happening in the shop. And hey, if you got cool materials and things you want us to machine, let us know in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.